Hi, I'm Dr. Sham Rakov, and we're going to talk a little bit about Urolift today, or more specifically, why it simply can't work. The other day, one of the reps from the company came to me and tried to convince me that I was wrong. He wanted to know, you know, what my overall take is. And I said, well, my overall take is it doesn't work because it can't work. Of course, that is something that surprised him, so let me go into a little bit more detail. Today, we're going to deconstruct Eurolift to explain why it doesn't work because it can't work. So here are a couple of the hand pieces, the Eurolift hand pieces. These um, devices are, you would expect, to be high tech. Anything that costs about $1,000 should be that way. And when you think about it, it must be that way. Because let's work through this. I'm going to just take one of my models over here. So if this is the bladder, and this area over here is the prostate, such that when the prostate enlarges, it narrows off the channel, and therefore you can't urinate well. And the idea behind Eurolift is if we put a clip here, and here, and here, and here, kind of pulls it over. We do the same on the other side. So it should be, theoretically, a symmetric opening. But let's think about what has to happen then. One, this and this side may look great on a model, but in real life, they're very asymmetric. This one may have denser tissue. This may have some stones in it. This may be a little bit thicker just because that's the way things develop. Along the way, we've got blood vessels in here. We have nerves in here. And of course, if it pierces to the outside to anchor, well, right on the outside, we've got nerves and blood vessels, veins, arteries. So you've got to have a high-tech, really, really intuitive, well-designed handpiece that can navigate all that stuff or else you're going to be in trouble. So let's take a look at this high-tech device. Now this is the device, the handpiece, that was used up until very recently. It's the one that was responsible for close to 400,000 procedures worldwide. At least that's what the company touts. And if we take a close look on it, we have triggers that we use to get the tip into position and to deploy the Eurolift clip itself. And let's take a closer look at the tip, it's at the whole mechanism. So we hit a trigger in the person's body. This, that's the deployed. This is a very, very sharp needle edge thing here, which out of which comes the Eurolift. Now the Eurolift itself is really tiny. This my index finger look at it compared to my index finger. This little area over here is the anchor. So this is the part that's supposed to make it out to here and to anchor in. Then there's another piece on the inside that gets cut so that you have something that goes across like that. Let's just take a screwdriver, as I did on this one, and see what really high-tech developments are on the inside to allow us to successfully do that. And if we take it apart, what we are amazingly introduced to is nothing more than a spool of strings, of suture, by a simple spring maneuver. There are no sensors in here. There's really nothing other than you would you'd look at this and say that's kind of a child's toy, except it's $1,000 or such. And it is the reason why we are allowed to do some sort of a procedure on the human body. There are no sensors here. There's no feedback. There's no high-tech stuff. All we do is we hit this trigger, the spring deploys. It goes wherever it goes, which not surprisingly is not where you expect it to go. Or unfortunately, at times, it goes where you do expect it to go, but it hits things you don't want it to hit. So if we look at this design and we look at what it has to do, is it any surprise that right off the bat, from the get-go, the only thing you can think to yourself is, are you kidding me? That's what it's all about? Unfortunately, that is what it's all about. And if it doesn't work, it's because it can't work. We'll have more follow-ups on going into more details, but I hope this helps. I'm Dr. Shaman Rakov.